glorious God. Just lift up your hands while you are seated. Wonderful God, miracle. Of kings, omnipotent God, I worship you, your majesty is forever. Glorious. Important one, I worship you. Your majesty is forever. Omnipotent one, I worship you. Your majesty is forever. I need four guys here. Yeah, let me just do something first. I'm talking to you about the seven spirits of God. I need to tidy up something. I started in the morning. Yes, four guys just here. So, Isaiah chapter 11, there is something we discovered in the morning. I'm just trying to put it in pictorial form and then I'll move on to something else. You see, the ultimate goal of the spirit coming upon men is the transformation of the society where that individual lives, impact on people. From soul winning to social impact and to the transformation of that society completely. Verse 9 said, They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain, for the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of God as the water covers the sea. But verse 1 starts by, and verse 2, talking about the outpouring of the seven spirits of God on people. And this is where it finally leads to. They shall not hurt, nor destroy. Society is changed now. People care about each other. Violence vanishes. Peace is restored. Conflict leaves. But if you look at that verse 9, you see what will produce that transformation is the knowledge of God covering the place like water covers the sea. So what is causing the conflict? What is causing the dilapidation? What is causing underdevelopment? Ignorance. What drives it away? The knowledge, the light of the knowledge of God. So this is the final result social transformation this is the instrument for transformation knowledge the preaching of the gospel but who is going to dispense that knowledge the man that god has anointed that's why he started by saying there shall come a root out of the branch of jesse god raises a man the particular individual he used as a mother came from the lineage of david is jesus god raises this individual what does he do for this individual to help him get the job done he anoints him with the seven spirits of god that's verse two so you see the spirit is poured upon men 
those men must take the message and go out and begin to affect the society with the message and the end result is the place is transformed god doesn't want people just talking with mere human ability it won't change much how what kind of words will come out of your mouth it will melt a hardened heart of a criminal it will dissolve the man that is violent it will transform that one that's a criminal anointed words if the anointing is on your life your words will not be ordinary and if the anointing is on your life the first thing it does is that it lighting seven candles in your spirit and those seven candles gives you access to diversities of of capacities it quickens your inner faculties it doesn't just give you knowledge because there are some problems that knowledge can solve this some situation require wisdom it will equip you with wisdom it will equip you with understanding it will equip you with counsel it will equip you with the spirit of the fear of the lord the holy spirit will make you a model make your life an example for others and then what flows from you convicts people and transforms people we call it the spirit of transformation the spirit of the fear of the lord is the spirit of transformation it brings moral revolution it brings moral transformation in lives of people their character will change their behavior will change if the spirit of the lord is on you the way you speak is not just information you give people that deposit is left with them and then he follows so people get the word they get the spirit and then when they leave you these things work in their life till it produces change and results if i want to add one more person where is that other guy or another person can just come fast here so you see the five process involved yeah here what exactly is this one to trigger this process of the outpouring of the spirit is that with prayer so prayer will lead to impartation you see and your own transformation the thing will change you first and then he equips you to go forth because what happens here is that a leader emerges I also want to say this that if you look at what was taught in Isaiah chapter 11 because God need leaders that can enforce righteousness not just those that can preach it he needs the knowledge of God to saturate the earth so he needs those that will preach educate people enlighten people disciple people but he also need those that will enforce righteousness on the earth let me show it to you again the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. Please go back. You are jumping. Verse 2. The spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. Spirit of wisdom, understanding, counsel, might. The spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. Verse 3. Look at what he will talk, make out of his life. It will make him of quick understanding in the fear of the Lord. And then he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes, nor reprove after the hearing of his ears. Verse 4. But with righteousness shall he judge the poor, reprove with equity, for the meek of the earth he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked you see beyond the preaching he needs those that will enforce and enforcing righteousness sometimes re requires dealing with the wicked tackling injustice tackling oppression and sometimes it might require removing some people. So the seven spirits of God, when it comes upon you, one of the things it's going to do is to cause elevation through the kind of wisdom, the kind of anointing it brings into your life. It causes you to rise and stand out like Daniel, like Joseph. It will cause elevation in your life. It will cause promotion. It will cause distinction. 
And that strategic positioning is so that you will have the ability not just to preach, but to enforce. In other words, God pours out his spirit upon his children. Many of you now, after this conference, you will notice within the next one year, some of you will find yourself to the top of your industry. Some of you will be halfway on the way because from the bottom, you are here now. And next time, you are there. Because it's going to take you from the bottom to the top. But why is God trying to get you there so that you can be MD, manager, uh, CEO, uh, ED, so that your salary is now tripled? No. So that you can have the empowerment to enforce certain standards. There are people that is going to take to the peak of their political career from obscurity to death. So God does not just need preachers. God needs righteous leaders. He needs governors. He needs senators. He needs judges. He needs CEOs. He needs managers that are endued with the spirit of justice, with the spirit of righteousness, so they can do what is right and enforce it in the whole organization. Have you read Deuteronomy 34 verse 9? Please put it up. Let them see. Joshua the son of Nun was filled with the spirit of wisdom for Moses had laid his hands on them. It's one of the ways he's given. It's called impartation. That's one of the ways he's given. It's called impartation. I can give it if God hasn't given it to me. the Lord holy is the Lord holy is the Lord besides you All of you go to your seat. I need to show you what this is before you start receiving it. I need to show you what it is. What are the seven spirits of God? There are about four or five languages used to describe it in the Bible. Number one. Please put up that golden lampstand one more time because this discussion is about the Holy Spirit himself not about his power about him you will see that lampstand that is one lamp but it has seven branches the, the writing to say is, is not, it doesn't have seven branches it has six branches plus the middle branch making it seven so if I say seven branches, you understand why I say it like that. It has three branches here, three branches here, plus the center one, making it seven. This is how the Holy Spirit is. It's one lamp. So tomorrow, don't let anybody tell you there are seven Holy Spirits. If the seven of these lamps are burning in you, when you receive the Holy Spirit, you have what the Bible calls the fullness of the Spirit. A man that has this seven has the fullness of the Spirit or full measure. It tells you that people can have the Spirit in measure. There are degrees of anointing. There are measures of the Spirit. John chapter 3 verse 34 said, He whom God sent, speaking the word of God, John 
the Baptist was one talking and he's talking about Jesus and when God sent his son to bring the message of redemption he said he whom God sent speaketh the word of God for God giveth not the spirit by measure unto him that's why you are reading it in Isaiah 11 that there shall come a root out of the stem of Jesse and he's talking about Jesus that came from the tribe of David and the spirit of the Lord shall come and he listed the seven Jesus had all the seven complete so he had the fullness of the Holy Spirit in 30 years of being in ministry I've met a lot of people I've seen pastors without wisdom I've seen a lot of believers that are foolish yes that word should not be mentioned in connection with a believer but sad to say You see it in the choices they make. You see it in the choice of who they marry. You see it in all sorts of things. I've seen people wreck their life. I've also seen people God has blessed with things and they will wreck it. The seven spirits of God is missing in their life. They may be born again. And then sometimes you meet people, they only have one of those candles functioning. Just one. Six are off. Even in the temple, it happens sometimes. One goes off, another one follows it, a third one follows it, and just one is burning, or two is burning. Because there is daily maintenance of that lamp. It's called the menorah. It's in the temple of God. It's in the holy place, just before you go into the holiest of holies. Is maintained daily. You refuel the oil. The oil is not in the base. You see, the base is just a stand. The oil is on those. You know, this one is good. And uh, when I look at this particular one they chose for me, it looks like it has candles on it. The real menorah does not have candles. There is something like a cup on the top of those branches. And then on those cups is a wick, like in your lamp. When you use kerosene lamp, um, is that the best one? Which other type of lamp that has that wick that burns where you put fire? Hmm? Even candles has it. You put fire in it. And so the energy of the candle comes from the wax. Why the wick carries the flame? That's how the menorah is. That cup, there are seven cups on top. That's where you pour oil then the weak is what burns. Do you know the, can, the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord? Show it to them, uh, Proverbs chapter 20. These are things that are supposed to be burning inside your spirit, man. So now, if they are there, you need to understand what they are. You will have seven inner faculties because externally you have five faculties. They are called the five senses. You have the sense of hearing, you have the sense of sight, you have the sense of smell, you have the sense of taste, and you have the sense of touch. These are your five natural external faculties. But internally, internally, you are supposed to have seven senses. That's what this gives you. Seven internal faculties. There's some of that that helps you hear. There's some of that that helps you see. There is some of that that helps you when it comes to decision making and making wise decisions. There is some of that that helps you in discernment. You can't go into deception with these lamps burning in your life. You can't. You see through things. You don't just see with these eyes. You even see with your eyes closed. With your physical eyes closed, you are still seeing because in the bible they are called eyes seven eyes of the lord and when anybody gets it, you gain seven new eyes apart from your physical eyes 
you see the spirit of man is the candle of the lord searching all the inward part of the belly you see that the seven spirits of god weakens your inner man and imparts new abilities and these are the these are those equipment that distinguishes people make sure you follow me to the conclusion tomorrow and tomorrow evening when i anoint people make sure you follow it the bible said knowledge first everything is built on knowledge if you want to help people give the knowledge first what are they let me help you understand you see now we call them eyes Zechariah 4 verse 10 go to verse 10 who has despised the days of small thing? they shall rejoice and shall see the promise in the hand of Zerubbabel who is Zerubbabel? king of Judah descendant of David and he's saying that somebody is going to come from that lineage and the spirit of the Lord is talking about Jesus the Messiah who is the seed of David I showed you in the morning uh, Revelation chapter 22 verse 16 maybe you should show it to them Jesus introduced himself as the offspring and the root of David yeah offspring of David Jesus I Jesus have sent my angels to testify unto you these things in the churches I am the root and the offspring of David the brighter morning star yeah go back to Isaiah 11 verse 1 and there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse that's the father of David a branch shall grow out of his roots then verse 2 and the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him and the spirit of wisdom is talking about Jesus hmm okay okay i think it's also good that you get a contest of that zachariah if you get it it will help you start from verse one so that they will see okay the angel that talked with me came again woke me as a man that is walking out of sleep verse two and he said to me what seest thou and i, I looked and behold a candlestick all of gold with bowl upon the top of it you see i told you the bowl where you put the oil is always on the top of all day be watching the bowl on top of it and his seven lamps thereon and seven pipes to the seven lamps that are upon the top thereof verse three is important and two olive trees by it one upon the right side of the bowl and the other upon the left side of the bowl verse four so i I answered and spoke to the angel that talked with me, saying, What are these, my Lord? Yes. Verse 5. Then the angel that talked with me answered and said, No, is thou not what this be? And I said, No, my Lord. Then verse 6. And he answered and spoke to, unto me, saying, This is the explanation of what those seven lambs are. This is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel, said, Not by might, not by power, but what? By my spirit, says. It just gave him a revelation of the Holy Spirit. There is beyond your natural ability, beyond your strength and skills, there is supernatural endowment that God can give you that will enable you. This man is a, is a leader, is a king that has just come at a desperate time in Israel. Do you know when he became a king? Not when Israel was a nation in good times and prosperity. After the nation was destroyed, became a failed state, they went into captivity in Babylon for 70 years and then Persian Empire destroyed the Babylonian Empire and a king by the name of Cyrus came to power and permitted the Jews to return back to their land and now these slaves are returning to the promised land and guess the first king they got Zerubbabel you remember when the Jews returned to the promised land the first prime minister they got was uh, David Ben-Gulion you remember that the one that led the 1967 war so you return when the whole place is destroyed temple burned the whole nation destroyed completely and you are going to have to build everything from the scratch 
And when you come into a situation like that, maybe you have a ministry that is just starting or you have a business, things are not going well in this business or it's a family or it's a society, God asks you to take or you win election and the, the, the economy of the state or the state of things, violence, everything is in a mess and you are wondering, where do I start? Look at this marriage. Look at this family. Look at this children. Look at this church. Look at this organization. Look at this. Where do I start? They just made me a manager. Look for the anointing. That's where you should start. Not by power. Not by might. But by my spirit, says the Lord. Verse 7. Who art thou, O great mountain, before Zerubbabel? You shall become a plain. Give me another translation. I want them to see. No matter the obstacle before you get the anointing, it will level it for you. If you watch in this particular situation, he wasn't a preacher. This is a king. Seven spirits of God is not just for preaching. It could be for your profession. It could be for leadership. It could be for so many things obstacles as great as mountain will disappear before you and you will rebuild the temple as you put the last stone in place and the people will shout what beautiful beautiful this is solomon's temple that was destroyed and the city of jerusalem destroyed with the anointing i don't care what your calling is i don't care what your profession is discover what i'm bringing to you tonight Take the poorest man in the whole continent of Africa. Put this uh, seven spirits in his life. His world has changed. You are going to create in some situation the wealthiest man right after that. Just a matter of time. You've given him the costliest treasures there. It's like taking the poorest man and dashing him a diamond mine. That's what you have done for that man. All he needs is somebody to teach him what he they just gave him and how to operate it. Okay, now let's go to verse 10. So this is how the anointing impacted Zerubbabel, and then God started using it as prophecy to talk about Jesus that will come from that lineage okay who has despised the days of small things for they shall rejoice and shall see the improvement in the hand of Zerubbabel with those seven and what are these seven remember there are seven lamps but look at them now they are the eyes of the Lord that run to and fro throughout the whole earth you see what you have is these two external eyes no when you get the seven spirit, you have seven inner eyes plus two external ones. You can see things that people can't see. Let's even talk about this in your Bible. All this Bible that people open, they don't see anything. But it's the Holy Spirit that uttered the scriptures. It comes on you. It comes in your life. It, and because one of his ministry is the ministry of a teacher. And one of those candles is the candle of knowledge. You have enlisted in education program. With an invisible teacher that people don't know. Every morning, every night. He enlists you in school opening your eyes i'm a studious person i study oh i study if you if you if you have hunger for for god you will have hunger for knowledge if you don't have hunger for knowledge you don't have hunger for god if i see you there is no hunger for his word you don't have hunger for god but you know I have a terrific digestive system 
that breaks down knowledge, processes them into revelation, processes them into understanding, and processes them into wisdom. And that is not something acquired in school or something I was born with. It was given to me by the seven spirits of God. It's called the spirit of understanding. The spirit of understanding. No matter how complex anything is, he breaks it down and opens my eyes to, to get it. When they are dealing with the things of God, you, your eyes start closing physically because you know what eyes is dull. There is nothing. The eyes of the spirit is blind. And so what happens to the physical body? You are not getting it. You are lost. What are they talking about? Ephesians 1 verse 17. In whom Ephesians chapter 1 verse 17 that the God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. These are just two of those candles, two. This is the spirit of wisdom and the spirit of understanding. When Solomon went to the Mount Gibwa and made sacrifices to the Lord and God said, what do you want me to give you? And he made a request. What did God give him? Did God put him in a school? Did he send him to Harvard? Because he asked for an understanding mind and wisdom. Well, how did he give it to him? He just took the spirit and we.